and welcome again. Um, we're gonna continue where we left off in the last tutorial. Uh, as you can see, the fast Ethernet interface interfaces that we configured on both of our routers are up and running. Both LEDs are blinking green. And now we're gonna configure the serial interfaces. And in this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to configure um, basically uh, passwords on all on the console port and for the telnet lines and also a secret password for the router itself so you can uh, prevent unwanted access either you know through telnet or uh, by somebody physically consoling into your router uh, I'm gonna quickly configure the other interfaces on the other routers so we could uh, have those up and ready for the next tutorial procedure is pretty much basically the same as before I'm going to configure the serial interfaces and we're going to use the interface 00 slash 0 I'm going to give it an address of 10 And it's very important since interface uh, serial zero on this router is performing our clocking. We must also, you know, uh, give the router a clock rate so that it can synchronize the communication. We're going to use a clock rate of 64,000. Okay, this interface is ready. And we're going to switch over to router. Uh, have to power it on. Let's wait for it to come online. Okay, the router is ready. Uh, we're going to get the interface. bring the interface online and as you can see the router has prompted you as the interface you know stay changed to up and the protocol is up uh, to verify connectivity again which is basically gonna do a show IP interfaces brief as you can see I'm using a basically just uh, shorthand. The router understands certain commands. You don't have to type them completely. Once you get you know more used to using the abbreviations, you can. Or if you would like to, you can just use the normal extended commands. As you can see, uh, it sells as a serial interface 0 slash 0 has this address and it's up and up. Now, to be able to test connectivity, we're going to ping across the serial line. Ping 11 that's 0, that's 0, that's 1. There we go. The ping was successful, and our routers are up and running. Now, um, one thing you always want to do is uh, name your routers, so it's easier for you to keep track of which router you're working on, especially when you're working across telnet from router to router. Um, to be able to name your router, all you have to do basically is uh, enter con uh, go to config mode. Config T and just type the word hostname space and you can enter whichever name you want without any spaces so we're going to call you Miami as you can see the hostname of the router changed to Miami uh, let's change the names on router 0 we're going to exit in the configuration mode we're going to enter hostname we're going to call you Dallas and we're going to enter router 2 and exit interface configuration hostname we'll call you call you San Francisco 
Okay. Um, next, I'm going to show you how to set an encrypted password, uh, which is called the secret password, so that when somebody tries to access privilege exec mode, uh, they have to provide the password. If not, they won't be allowed. Uh, to set this password, you are basically just going to type in a name, secret, space, and whatever the password you want it to be. Uh, for this example, we're going to use class as our password. Now, give it a test and see if it works. We're going to exit, and exit again, and it takes us back to our original prompt. If we hit enter, we're going to be able to access user mode. But as soon as we try to enable and, and, and engage privilege mode, it's going to prompt us for a password. We try to enter class, and there we go. We're in. So, now we're going to be able to configure also a password on the physical console port, so that whenever somebody consoles in the first thing before they even get to uh, user mode, they have to also provide another password. Uh, to be able to configure any commands, on any other, any other lines, whether it be the console line, the auxiliary, or the BTYs, which are basically the telnet ports, the virtual ports. Uh, I just gotta enter the command line, console, zero, hit enter. As you can see, uh, the prompt changed from config to config hyphen line. Uh, we can view a list of available commands, which this is a watered down version also, but basically these are, these are the ones you usually uh, use on you know, for regular configurations. Um, you want to be able to set a password on this, so basically just type the password command. You're going to use this clever password and hit enter. Now, um, unless you instruct the router to use this password when somebody's trying to log in, it won't. So you have to tell the router to basically log in, and that automatically tells it to use that password. Um, okay, let's test it out. I'm going to hit Control Z, bring it back to the beginning and we're going to hit exit. And as soon as we come in, it should prompt us for a password which is Cisco. And as soon as we enable, it provides prompt us for another password which is class and we're in. So pretty much basically that's it for this tutorial. Um, it's a simple basic configuration. Um, the process is pretty much the same for the the virtual lines, if you want to configure a password on the VTY, all you gotta type is line VTY and the number of virtual terminals you want. Usually the standard is five between zero to four. Hit enter. You enter config line mode. Same exact uh, concept as password. And then log in. And then you're set. One more thing I would like to cover is very, very important is that you should always save your configurations from um, RAM over to the NVRAM just in case you power down the router, you will not lose your configurations. So, uh, to save your configurations is really simple. All you gotta do is type in write and just let it write to the startup config file, which is a des uh, the regular destination name. Hit enter and the configuration is done. Now, if you power down your router and bring it back online, your router will just boot up and just start running the, you know, the configuration you set it with. Um, another way to do this. A little, a little longer, but uh, it's basically you can do a copy running hyphen config startup config. Oops. Hyphen config. And basically, it does the exact same thing, but the command is twice as long or three times as long. Uh, like I said, this basically concludes our tutorial. Um, Hopefully you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching, and um, just see you for the next tutorial.